What's up, YouTube peoples? This is video about toy, episode 5, where we're going to talk about all things Motu, but most of all, Masters of the Universe Origins. But first of all, i got to get myself a drink of water. <clears throat> okay. You got a little, little skit there. This is my third time doing that skit. This is my third time attempting... This video, I've learned a lot about the limitations of my phone <laughs> and the FAT32 file system. So uh, I got a lot to say. This might run over 25 minutes. It certainly has before. Uh, but let's see. So we're talking about Masters of the Universe Origins, which is Mattel's modern reimagining of the Masters of the Universe toy line. You know, sometimes called He-Man by, <laughs> by those not in the know. Uh, the famous Sword and Sorcery, Sword and Planet toy line from the early 80s, lasted to the mid-80s. And one of my, probably the first, the first toy, the first and only <laughs> toy line that was like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I want, seeing here, the technology. Um, also, here's here's an action feature for you. Well, that's not... There you go. Look at him go. Uh, this has been a fraught toy line throughout its existence and uh, continues to be fraught both uh, practically and emotionally for me and I, I would like to just talk about really Mattel's just handling of the entire He-Man thing over this past five odd years so now the original He-Mans they had you know they bent at the shoulders similar to the Battle Tribes which we saw in a previous video uh, they bent the shoulders, you know, their head turned, their head was often uh, squishy. <sighs> Reposition this light a little bit. Um, you know, they had, they had a, uh, I don't know why I'm using this for, for showing because it's not this way. They had a O-ring construction, you know, like a rubber, rubber band basically in the, in the middle that, was prone to decay and essentially the, the ruination of the figure <laughs> over time. Uh, and these, you know, the Origins line uh, has aimed to, you know, recreate the original characters pretty faithfully, generally. Tila doesn't want to stand. That's her prerogative. Pretty generally with the, you know... <laughs> When the line started, they didn't know what they were doing, so He-Man and Skeletor's heads are a little weird. They tried something new with them compared to the original uh, in, like, later later waves. You know, they sort of course-corrected on that He-Man situation. As you see here, my faker, the evil robot duplicate of He-Man, has the original He-Man head... Uh, and my He-Man and my Prince Adam back here do not, you know, they have the new He-Man head. So Faker's not fooling anyone. I think they did, they did eventually start distributing He-Mans with the new head. But who doesn't already have He-Man? I'm not buying, I'm not buying another He-Man. So the, uh, the tagline on the back of these guys was, uh, it was something like, where is Scareglow in here? I gotta talk about Scareglow. Where is he? I got a big old box. <laughs> there he is. That's that toy experience. The tagline was uh, something like ret retro modern modern styling retro play or something, which. Um, you know, it's essentially calling out that they have, they now have, you know, 
more more articulation in the shoulders, added elbow, you know, wrist articulation. Uh, the O-ring is gone. There's now crotch pegs, uh, and then also knees and uh, feet, <laughs> and the head is more articulated. Uh, great, you know, great sentiment, and a lot of, <laughs> even some of the most negative, critical, we'll say, even some of the most critical YouTubers out there have, uh, have bought into the retro play idea and you know that <laughs> these guys are somehow sturdy that's not really the case uh, as i have found um a couple different instances so scare glow in particular was one of the one of the things when they said we're making scare glow early on i i said okay i'm gonna buy this toy line and out of the box my scare glow uh, you can't really, I did such a good job super gluing it. <laughs> Out of the box, my scare glow's leg uh, just snapped in half as I was trying to bend it with very little pressure. Uh, and that's, I think if these things are, you know, stored cold, if they're shipped cold to you, absolutely put the, the elbows and knees in hot water or something before you start working on them. Uh, because that, that does, they do stiffen up and they do snap. They're, they're very, very, compared to something like the Mad Balls that we saw in episode one, the proportion of joint to like limb size is just feels very low. And it seems like they could have engineered that better. I don't know. <laughs> um, Another thing is I was trying to I was trying to get this Prince Adam on the on his sky sled here. And I was putting I was putting a little pressure on what I thought was the upper back. I guess I I I put some on the head and the head popped off and the torso like cracked open. And I think I think if it wasn't for this like rubber, you know, he basically has a rubber girdle <laughs> on his body you know i think i would have like a broken open figure like they're they're really not that sturdy i think they're engineer like some of the engineering is good you know uh let's see if i can well that was pretty easy so all of the the joints are interchangeable which they didn't uh out of the gate they didn't advertises a feature I don't think we were ex expected to notice <laughs> I think it's just a oh I can't get this one off there we go I think it's just a cost cutting thing you know like it's cheaper to make something impermanent and interchangeable than it is to make something that's permanent and like solidly 100% put together meant to last forever uh so that's an example of the, the fun you can have, <laughs> like all of the, the head, the, the arms, the legs, you know, it's all interchangeable on these guys. So <laughs> how do I feel about this toy line? Well, it's very complicated. I think that they, you know, if you're looking at things they did, to update the characters while still remaining faithful to the sort of the original spirit. I think nine times out of 10, they, you know, they made the right choice. They made the, the good choice when there was a choice to be made. Uh, but there is, there is kind of that odd head scratcher. Like what, why, why'd they do it like that? Um, I don't, I don't just now have a good, well, here's one. Okay. And here's another gripe on the, <laughs> on the durability. So my favorite, my favorite guy from the original toy line, I think on the whole 
I loved Scareglow, obviously, and I loved I loved Tongue Lashor. Uh, was Mosquitoor. He had a he has a blood pumping feature. You press a button on his back and blood pumps. And the very first time I oh got a little pump, got a little pump there. Okay, <laughs> great, great. You're doing good, Mosquitoor. Wow. So, <laughs> so the very first time I recorded this video, he wasn't pumping. And I was like, what the heck? Well, uh, at some point my mosquito started leaking and it is continuing to leak. Uh, but he is managing to pump. <laughs> so, okay, so wipe that off on my jorts. So what is the... What are the design decisions on Mosquito that are strange? Well, first of all, his torso, on the original toy, his torso was about half again this wide. And they just, they gave him sort of the normal size torso, which, I don't know, maybe they felt like they had to prove that they could <laughs> just fit the action feature in there. I think it looks a little weird. It's not broad enough. It actually looks like too skinny. I don't know. Um, here's the other thing. He's a deluxe figure, which means, you know, he has to come with some extra parts. So they gave him this like organic mosquito head, which I don't know what idea that's based on, but it's like, it's cute, I guess, but it's... As <laughs> It's just like a complete miss for me in terms of something I want to look at just because the original, I don't know, the original design is uh, so so strong to me. Um, love you, Mosquito. Um, keep, keep pumping. Uh, but just to contrast to that, you know, you got Rat Lore. He's a tall boy. And he shake, uh, and his they gave him the proportions from the original, which were, which were different because his action feature was his neck uh, used to pop out, which now they've just you know they've done that with uh, interchangeable parts, so you can just you can just put his head on normal, or you can snap a, a neck extension in the middle. So like he no longer needs to have this enormous torso, but they did give him the enormous torso, which I don't know. I customizers might be happy about having the different body shape, I guess. Um, so just off the cuff, here's, here's a weird thing about the toy line. So to me, You may remember this guy from the 1986 Macy's Day Parade. Squeeze. To me, the Snake Men was Tongue Lashore, Ratlore, and Squeeze. The Snake Men is like a weird kind of late line, other villainous faction. Like, you already have Skeletor and his guys. Then you have Hordak and the Evil Horde. Then you have the Snake Men. Um... I d <laughs> Mattel in Origins has made about 15 snake men <laughs> for some reason. I think in the in the like 2000s cartoon they kind of they they went into the snake men's lore a little bit more and kind of fleshed them out as a as a set of characters. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a weird thing to do, <laughs> especially considering that we're kind of in the twilight of the toy line and they're just hammering out Snake Man after Snake Man. So, I haven't talked about, like, the, the distribution situation on these has been a mess. From the beginning, they were originally, for the first year, they were Walmart exclusive. 
which was rough because we were we were getting into the pandemic. And at the best of times, I feel like going into Walmart is going to expose me to a lot of snot. And, <laughs> you know, so that was bad. Um, of course, at, uh, at midnight, at 12.01, at New Year's Eve, that first year, uh, these all kind of went up for, for order on, you know, online retailers. And that's, that's when I kind of, I had the He-Man and the Skeletor at that point, And that was when I was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> so, and throughout, throughout the line, some things have remained exclusive to various stores. Uh, for instance, there was the, uh, the Rise of Evil 2-pack, the fraught Rise of Evil 2-pack, uh, which featured the human version of Skeletor and the human version of Trapjaw, uh, which, you know, one of those is maybe kind of desirable to someone. Uh, the human version of Trapjaw is like a very lame design it's like if you just took Cyclops from the X-Men as is and just took his visor off and said, oh, this is, this is an interesting character to look at that <laughs> makes sense. And people will want to buy a toy of. No, that's not the case. So, uh, so there, you know, at first that, that, was, that particular two-pack was very, very low and poorly distributed, but like within, within a week... Every target in the country had stacks and stacks and stacks of this this weird two pack that only like a certain type of collector was interested in, and that's sort of been the I can't get this bow in Ninjor's hand, dude. Under pressure, um, <laughs> that's sort of the only. What 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 are you saying? I don't know. Anyway. Here's another example of a good engineering decision they made is uh, Mantena, the original, had sort of fused together. He had two legs, two plastic legs, but you could see them through the molding. It was like four legs fused together. So on this one, they gave him just four legs, and he has the same action feature. Maybe even works a little better than the original. Mantena's a... A slam dunk. So another, a tangentially related <laughs> toy line uh, that did remain, for the most part, exclusive to Walmart was uh, Masters of the WWE Universe. Now Mattel, Mattel clearly feels like they have like struck gold with this body construction because they made this, uh, you know, this this WWE toy line, and now they have a wrestling, a wrestling toy line that is non-fantasy based. It's just straight up real world wrestling figures using the same body construction. And that, that has remained to my knowledge, 100% Walmart exclusive. Um, and going forward, like Mattel has announced a uh, street shark remake, <laughs> which is, you know, it's a totally different thing. Uh, but it's using the same, like, they're doing the same thing with the arms. Like, the same kind of exact same construction, so. Uh, and then you've got here the, this this particular guy. <laughs> I'm currently saying this is the last guy I'm going to get from this toy line. There's been There's been a few lasts. Uh, and if this if this is truly the last, it's a good one to go out on. Uh, this is mutated He Man from the Turtles of Gray Skull toy line. He's got bigger bigger arms, which come from the Andre the Giants <laughs> from the the WWE toy line. So smart on Mattel's part reuse of body parts. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if you're if you're looking at the Street Sharks. Maybe kind of think about what's happened with, with this toy line. 
and uh, have have a care in that regard. Well, what what has happened with this toy line? Well, I feel like Mattel has sort of mismanaged. You know, the distribution and like figure production has has just been a complete mess. You know, like Triclops. I missed out on Triclops. I've I've tried to limit to characters that have some like nostalgic feeling or or even, you know, emotional meaning for me. I I haven't I'm not trying to collect the whole line. I do have a good chunk of it. Uh, but Mattel you know, they didn't, they just, well, for some reason, Triclops' wave, they just didn't make any. They barely made any, and it sold out immediately everywhere. Uh, they are reprinting him, and I'm like, I, I don't think I'm going to get it, you know? Where's, where's the button to make him pop? I can't find Ram Man's button. I forgot. I forgot how Ram Man works. Oh, well. Ram man. Uh, so anyway, Mattel has sort of they're moving they're moving here at the end of the line to like strictly online uh, sales for these things in an extremely limited way through through the, through their Mattel creations thing. Um, so one good thing about the line, it's always had great you know, box art, great art on the figures, really well done paintings, digital paintings, I don't know. But, you know, uh, Rio Blast and Extendar here. Extendar already has been released through Mattel Creations and sold out. Uh, Rio Blast has not, you know, come out yet. Uh, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that being mad about that because I I've been waiting for Rio Blast I love Rio Blast he's one of my favorites and I love Extendar too and like drag store you know there's characters there's characters that are not going to be made at mass market and essentially like if you're not rich lucky or an influencer you are not gonna get because <laughs> Because they're going to be made in limited numbers and sold in a very scalper-friendly way, you know? Uh, it's very frustrating. So, I'm almost at the end of the box here. Uh, here is a, an interesting footnote in the line. Is uh, Sun Man. There's his friend Space Sumo. And, whoop, and there's his foe. Get out of there. Step, step back, son. Man. His foe, the villainous pig man. Um, now, these guys were from a... I got these guys from a Target 3-pack that was deeply discounted because Target got too many of them and didn't sell any of them. Uh, but Sun Man was a, a competing... I, I guess we'll say a competing toy line from the 80s that was made to... Uh, uh, to give black children a positive role model, because I guess maybe Clamp Champ wasn't out yet, and you know uh, Clamp Champ's not really enough. You, you could have more. Uh, so they rolled they rolled Sun Man into Masters of the Universe officially, which is it's a good sentiment, but I feel like Mattel could have done a better job because. And these guys are out of the same three pack, and they have the same head, just repainted. So, Sun Man has about eight, ten friends who, you know, very, very minimal sort of effort went into those guys on Mattel's part. You know, they they have about three heads between the eight of them, if even if even three heads, it might just be two heads. And really, you know, any. Any effort that I've displayed here that sort of went into reimagining these characters, like none of none of that went into like Sun Man's group. They all just sort of got verbatim done for the sake of it, really. Uh, and I wish, 
I do wish that Mattel had uh, done the same thing with Brave Star and Black Star. You know, filmation. Black Star had a toy line. It, it was a filmation cartoon, like He Man, but it it had a competing toy line from another company. Same same thing with Brave Star. Uh, I think I think those would have done well in this figure size. But uh, I don't know, Mattel. It really He Man sat dormant for a while, and Mattel. For some reason, in the past five years, just decided we're going all out. We are we are going all out with He Man. We're doing Hot Wheels. We're doing Hot Wheels that are both based on the characters, sort of in an abstract way, and then Hot Wheels that are reproductions of classic vehicles. Uh, we're doing Masters of the Universe minis. Uh, seen here is the uh, He Man. Netflix children's He-Man cartoon version of He-Man, which I haven't seen. Uh, it's weird. It's weird that they did that, uh, but they, they did for a brief time have sort of a competing different children's He-Man toy line based on this cartoon, and I don't think that did very well. Uh, we're going to do Masters of the Universe Revelations. This is Tila, the, the minis Tila from Revelations. <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a short Netflix original series that I don't think is fantastic. It's fine. Uh, really, I don't know. It's it's weird to do a sequel, like a sort of an adult modern sequel to a, a cartoon that is as silly as He-Man. But the cartoon has never really been my thing. My thing has been the toys and their, the, the lore <laughs> that I sort of invent from the toys. Uh, and then there's Mega Blocks. I think these are called Mega Blocks. I don't know, just weird bootleg Legos. Uh, and then there's, there's also Masterverse, which we're not seeing here because I don't give a shit about. They're like yeah, slightly taller, higher end, finger quotes, he-Man's, and I don't know, like, it really, it feels to me that Mattel made no effort to, like, get He-Man back out there, like, as far as I know, the only way to watch the show, the original series, is, like, through, through YouTube videos that are intended to be something you put on your kid's iPad to shut your kid up, you know, like, three hours Three hours positive He-Man message, <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's very bizarre that they, that they have, they put out so much plastic crap with just kind of a misguided sort of support, you know? I don't think Revelations was the best idea. And I don't think that the the He-Man cartoon for babies, it, it just felt like they, they put He-Man in a shotgun <laughs> and really blasted it out there. And as a result, He-Man just seems to be kind of burning out again. And, you know, from a corporate standpoint, maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they just wanted to burn He-Man to earn some extra money and, you know, maybe in another 20 years they'll trot He-Man back out again because it really does it, it it feels like we're at the twilight of something with with, <laughs> with He-Man, like we're at we're at a, a limit because it's going it's going online only it's slowing down the pandemic is over and, you know the, the line the line did not finish, but it's um, it does seem to be ending. You know, they all came with they came with mini comics. They're, none of them are really fantastic, but they're good. It's a good a good nod to the original line. So, I don't know. In conclusions, I suppose my feelings on Masters of the Universe Origins is I I wish they had done a better job 
with the engineering, I would have, I honestly would prefer, it's weird too, you know, because they made the Masterverse, they're making Masterverse now, which is the super, super posable high-end collector's He-Mans. You know, I would have preferred had these just been the brick construction, you know, no elbows, no knees of the original. Because it does, they do feel, they just don't feel playable to me. I, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to play with them. There's just like a, there's a stiffness and a, a fragility to the elbows and knees in particular. And, you know, other, other parts looking at imprints at them. I don't know. Uh, if I could, if I could do it all again, maybe I would, maybe I would not get into the toy line. Maybe I'd just get the scare glow. You know, maybe, maybe get a Skeletor. I don't know. They've been relegated to a box because my, my dear cat, Bob, got, uh, got old enough and big enough that he's decided to start <laughs> inspecting them all the time. So, you know, even in that regard, Battle Tribe's easier. You know, they take up less space. They're easier to put on the shelf. I don't know. If I could just get the time back, the money back, <laughs> maybe maybe I wouldn't have collected this line. And again, if you're if you're looking at those street sharks, maybe yeah, maybe street sharks, of course, is like a much smaller toy line. So I don't think you'll I don't think they'll not make all the guys you care about. But anyway, we've actually gone over thirty minutes, so I, I hope this video is. In one piece, or I'm going to be real mad. Uh, so to close, I got to go back home to my arcade. Get it? Oh, shit. <laughs>